Uh, giving a raise can be very exciting or very stressful, and it oftentimes just comes down to who initiated the conversation. Today, I'm going to share with you what to do when you're initiating an offer of a raise, and then also what to do when your assistant approaches you and says, hey, we got to talk, which can be a very, very stressful feeling. We're going to cover all that today. Okay, let's first talk about a few guidelines, especially in the easier scenario where you're the one offering an a raise. Now, why would you want to speak up first and give someone a raise when they're willing to work for less money? A few reasons. Number one is by you speaking up first, you're setting the tone that this is not a business where you're going to be rewarded on tenure. So tenure is just a fancy way of saying, You've been here for a year, so you get a yearly raise. Or because it's Christmas time, you automatically get a bonus. I just typically have not loved the whole periodic raise uh, situation. N- nor do I like combining compensation review with performance review. I really want those two to be separate conversations. And so to me, if you can speak up first and say, hey, I know inflation is happening. Um, I'm going to take your pay up by a few dollars an hour. Then your teammates really get to know that you are someone who is looking out for their best interests. Um, I've given raises sometimes multiple times in a year, sometimes not for a year and a half or two years. So to me, I really want to separate that more so corporate government approach of tenure equaling pay raise and instead really instill that sense of merit equaling pay raise. So that's why I speak up first. Um, I want my teammates to feel valued. I want my assistant to see that the amount that they're increasing their skill, their independence, and the ultimately the responsibility that they're taking over bigger and bigger areas of the business is being recognized and rewarded. And here's the thing is when an assistant makes a bigger difference, oftentimes they're freeing you up. Oftentimes they're taking an hour or two hours a week off your plate by doing that next thing. Or maybe it's five hours a month if it's like a monthly task or something. You're going to be able to make that up. Like you're, you're going to be able to find a way to um, generate more sales or... Um, Perhaps take a skill that was being done by an expensive outside contractor and train your assistant on that skill. So you go from paying 50 bucks an hour to maybe half of that to your assistant. So typically speaking, obviously it's always a good thing to keep expenses down for the survival of the business. And of course your assistant wants the business to survive too, because if the business doesn't survive, they don't have a job, right? So, I mean, an assistant doesn't want to put you out of business either, right? So That being said, when they've taken significant chunks of work off your plate, you may want to think about speaking up first. So let's talk about uh, a few principles for for offering that raise. And some of these will definitely apply to if your assistant brings it up first. Let's talk about when to offer a raise, why to offer a raise, how much to raise by, how to offer the raise, and uh, if they, of course, have asked first. So again, we've, we've already talked about don't give the raise based on an anniversary or tenure. I want to do it on performance. I would say in my career, at least 90% of the time, oftentimes it's more like 95% of the time or more, I've actually been the one to bring up the offer of a raise first because I've seen some significant increase in their performance. For example, if my assistant says, hey, I'm going to take over all your CRM, Um, you know, I'd like to take some training. I might even pay for the training, right, for my assistant. In fact, I pretty much always do unless they can find something free online. And uh, now they're doing all of my CRM. I mean like email marketing, uh, adding and removing contacts, running payments. They, they could, if they can become my CRM you know, master, that's a very clear step up in terms of responsibility and performance. I'm probably giving them a raise. Uh, another example, when I moved my company from Canada to the United States, Uh, my assistant took over paying all of payroll for our staff. She also was the one to set up Gusto. She was the one to 
go to all the different states that we have staff in and set up our tax ID with all of them. Oh my word. I mean, that is a clear step up in terms of responsibility. She definitely got a raise after that. So, um, I guess this kind of leads us to the next part, which is why you offer a raise. So I would say internal performance, like the significant chunks of, of responsibility that I've just mentioned. Um, anything that brings you less stress, saves up your time, and is, we call it task stacking, when they can take multiple smaller tasks, put them together, and own a whole area. So for example, maybe, maybe you do live events, or even if they're online events, and now your assistant is taking over, setting up the room, distributing the materials, booking the conference room if it's in person, doing the food and beverage if it's in person, um, taking the recording, getting it uploaded, um, converting it into the right file type, putting it into your members area. You know, you, you start stacking seven, eight, nine, ten of these tasks together. And when you get to the point where you can just be the surgeon in the room and you can just show up, do your thing and leave, that's a pretty good time to say like, okay, my assistants take over a big chunk. Maybe it's not a big raise, maybe it's 50 cents or something like that, maybe a dollar, but you know, it's something if they're taking over big chunks that is, that is really taking a lot of stress off of your mind. Now, there could also be some outside forces as to why you offer a raise. Um, when the pandemic hit, work from home became way more popular and Coca-Cola and Nike and Google and all the big companies were offering work from home. And so I watched firsthand front of, you know, on the front lines how much work from home pay went up. Uh, in fact, it went up from $15 to $20 an hour to $20 to $25 an hour. That's like a 33% increase just like that in the course of half a year. It was just extraordinary. Um, there could also be inflation like we've had fairly recently uh, pretty much worldwide, I know for sure here in North America. And with inflation going up you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight percent, um, I know that my staff was feeling it. And so my, my team uh, got a raise. And, um, you know, for, fortunately, unfortunately, man, I actually had to raise prices as well. And so our clients paid us more, and I turned around and just gave it to my team, including my assistant. Now, uh, there might be some other outside forces, you know, perhaps they have a baby on the way or a big medical bill and, you know, that might influence them to, to prompt the conversation. So we'll, we'll go there in just a sec, just to wrap up this whole, uh, what do I pay my assistant and how much should I give them a raise? There's also the element of like, what are you paying other teammates in similar roles? So if you have two assistants, um, you, you know, Inevitably, you may have to think about what's that other person making. And then there's also just the, again, unfortunate or fortunate reality that you got to think about what can you afford. And I think if we're going to get into that conversation of what can you afford, I think it's important to say, um, what can you not afford? Uh, so uh, let me say it differently. What can I afford to pay and what can I afford to lose? So if this assistant were to go away, um, what position would I be in? Like that, that's just part of the equation, right? Obviously we never want to think of anyone as being kind of like just a number or expendable or whatever. Uh, just from a business view, we got to think about that, right? What would it take to, to replace this person if they did choose to walk, if I'm not able to help them the way they'd like to. Now in terms of how much to raise, um, you know, if it's a smaller bump, it might be 50 cents an hour or something. Um, on a 22 to $25 an hour, um, uh, uh, wage or, or, or contract amount or whatever, you know, t typically I'm going up by one to $2 an hour. Um, that, that seems to make a difference. Um, I, I wouldn't get into like percentages. I mean, eight to 9% is what that works out to. Um, but at these numbers, it's really the dollar that matters more than the percentage increase, I would say. And if you look at someone working 25 hours a week, and you give them an extra dollar an hour and they work 50 weeks per year, that's $12.50 a year. So a $1 increase in that instance is only about a $1,250 increase per year. And when I think about you as the entrepreneur at 25 hours a week times 50 weeks a year, I got to think you can make an extra $12.50 a year 
right? Even if you have to pay employment taxes and whatnot, if they're W-2, it's a little bit more than that. But I mean, under two Gs a year, you could have a very, very happy assistant, very, very excited to get a raise, feeling very appreciated and validated. And, you know, you get them at full power, no reservations, no questions, no hesitations. And that frees you up to go make that extra money. Now, when you're getting that time back, I got to think, you you, you got to know how, how you're going to go and make an extra 20 to 200% increase in revenue. So even if you're making only $100,000 a year in your business, I don't mean to say only to, to make that minimal, but oftentimes when folks are getting an assistant, they're typically into six figures. Um, you know, a 20% increase is $20,000 in extra revenue. And I got to think with the amount of time you're getting from an assistant, it would definitely cover the twelve fifty a month that, you know, you may be paying extra for giving that raise. Now let's talk about how to offer a raise. Um, I really like to think of it as a teachable moment. So I like to explicitly say why I'm offering the raise. Typically I'm saying, you know, because you've taken over this responsibility or because your performance has gone up, like maybe instead of doing five things per week, they can now do 10 things. I'm being very vague on purpose there because a lot of assistants do a lot of different things. Um, I would just really make sure I tie it back to performance and responsibility. And I would, ex- I also explicitly, explicitly say it's not because of total hours worked or tenure. This isn't, you know, the government. This is not a union. Um, this is a meritocracy. And you got better, so I'm going to pay you better. All right, so let's get to the pricklier parts, which is if they've asked first. I've had this happen before. Um, I had a teammate probably three years ago. Uh, send me that dreaded DM that says, um, hey, can we speak? Instantly, I was like, oh, this isn't going to be good. <laughs> Something bad's going to happen. I don't know what it is, but it's like, you know, it's like when a, when a romantic significant other says, um, hey, can we speak? Same thing, right? <laughs> it's super stressful, pit in the stomach. I know it's stressful for them, but for us, you know, entrepreneurs, it's stressful for us too. That's no fun. Um, you know, in our heads, we're running through all these scenarios like, oh, I've spent so time, so much time training them. What if they're quitting? I'm telling you, they're thinking the same thing. They're like, oh, I spent all this time learning, you know, and it's no fun for them either. The prospect of having to ask for a job, uh, a, a raise. And if it doesn't go well, like if they have to think about going somewhere else because they're, they just, they need to make more money for whatever reason. I mean, that's stressful for them to go find a new job and it's stressful for them to have to learn a new system and be inefficient at what they do all over again and meet a bunch of new team members and are the new team members going to like me? Like, it's a two-way street, right? It's very much a two-way street. Both of you have invested a lot into each other and, and, and typically, typically people want to see a relationship continue. When I was getting my degree in exercise science, one of my professors, he made a really interesting statement that I think applies almost everywhere in life. And that statement was, uh, people will quit a program before they'll quit a relationship. So what do I mean by program? Anyone can go online and search weight loss program. On Google, they'll get a result. Heck, on ChatGPT, you can go on and say, build me a workout program, right? That's a program. It sets, it's reps, it's days of the week. That's it. But a relationship, on the other hand, is very different. Perhaps I go to CrossFit and there's other people I work out with. I get to know them or people in a class. That's a relationship. Perhaps I've got a trainer that I work out with. That's a relationship. Perhaps perhaps I have a workout buddy. That's a relationship. Anywhere that we have a relationship, that is, it's way less likely that we're going to quit that, whatever it is, where it would otherwise be easy just to quit the program. So typically in you know, in in my business, I've got a very small business, less than 10 team members. And I'm going to guess if you're listening to this, probably you do too. Relationship is heavy duty, right? There's a big time relationship between everybody. We we, we are not at the stage where everyone is just a number, right? And, and I, and I hope that the, the opportunity that you've got for your assistant, if you've hired well and led well, it's probably not just a job to them, right? They've, they've created some attachments as well. So if they're, if they're coming to you and asking for a raise where, where I begin is usually just to you know, be open-minded and, and even if I'm feeling a little bit nervous is just come with an open mind and ask some questions. Now, keep in mind, no team members required to divulge really any personal information. So make sure they know that it's optional and they don't feel pressured at all. 
And so I, I might say something like, hey, you know, thanks for coming to me with this. I really appreciate talking to you. Um, certainly, you know, if, if what's in, inspiring this request, whatever's behind this question, um, if it's really personal and you don't want to share, pl- please know that you're perfectly free to just say, you know, I'd rather not say, um, yeah, you, you are my teammate, my assistant. We've been working together. We've done great things. So I guess I'm just curious and uh, wanting to know if there's some way I can help. And perhaps that's with a raise, perhaps it's with something else. Curious to know what what's inspired this request today. And they might say, expecting a baby, move to a more expensive part of the country. I've got a big medical bill. Who knows what it is that they say, right? Part of why I'm asking, I, I don't want to pry. I don't want to bother them. I'm actually trying to see if I can help. And um, again, I would be very tentative in my language. So they really understand that it's completely optional. I'm just wondering if, for example, what's changed is they need to get a babysitter because, you know, perhaps their spouse has gone back to work. And so, you know, they're in a position that they need to make more money to be able to afford a babysitter. Well, if that's the case, then maybe what I can do is pay them the same amount, but just give them one day a week off or maybe change their hours or perhaps allow them to finish earlier in the day, or maybe they don't have to do a a few of the later day tasks or the early morning tasks or whatever. So if it's kind of more about the circumstances, maybe I can find a creative way to help them. Right. So that, that's where I'm coming from. Um, and, and I would, I would say that as well. I would just say, you know, I'd love to be part of the solution here. Um, you know, let's put our heads together and see what we can come up with. Right. And sometimes that works and and it, sometimes it doesn't, but I do like to get it on the table because, you know, if it's just a matter of changing their hours or just a matter of changing their start and end times or something like that, you might have a way easier change than you expected. Um, Now, maybe there's also, they're looking to get certified in something, or maybe, you know, they're looking to get a new piece of equipment or something like that. And that's what's behind the raise. Maybe you can invest in that. And, you know, instead of them getting the raise and then paying taxes on the new income they're getting from you, um, you can actually buy it directly for them. Now, obviously you got to think about W2 versus 1099. Like there's certainly those considerations as well. If you, if you have those concerns, talk to an employment attorney or an accountant, but I think the spirit of what I'm getting at is perhaps there are some creative solutions there. Now, um, it it could be that um, what they're looking for is actually not a raise, uh, but just more total income. I would say this is probably the single most common scenario I've run into across, you know, uh, 15 years, I guess, of, of having teammates is it's not actually about more dollars per hour. It's about a bigger paycheck. And so what a bigger paycheck each period, be that every other week or you know once a month, it's actually just about expanding their hours. And so if an assistant is at 25 hours and they're having this conversation with me, then I might say, you know, I don't know that I can increase your hours, but you know, if this is actually just about a bigger paycheck, what if I were to expand your hours from 25 hours a week to 30 hours a week? And that in of itself might be really, really exciting for both you and them, right? Um, you get five extra hours per, per week. You can train them on more. And now you're free to go do even more high level stuff. That can be very exciting. That's been by far the most common scenario that, that I've had. Um, now, there, there is the total possibility that Maybe they've had such a radical change in their life. And this is what happened in the story I started telling you is I had that teammate say, hey, can we speak? She had something happen in her family and there were major medical bills coming down the, the, the pike and like literally she would need a, she would need to double her income from, uh, from working inside my business. And given the market for the role that she was playing, I just could not... Um, I, I couldn't swallow it. I couldn't. And I shared that candidly with her. And I asked her, you know, if she was not with us, what her plan was. And um, she, she did have some skills in a very narrow area. Um, she had some web design skills. And those definitely were, you know, $40 an hour, $50 an hour skills. We just didn't have a need for full-time web design services. So 
what we kind of landed at was that in fact she would move on and um you know she gave me plenty of runway and so you know she was willing to help train the next person which was very very kind of her and i actually ended up actually referring a couple of clients to her once she started her own web design agency um here at the end of the day you just got to know that sometimes you're going to have team members leave um of course it's cozy to think oh hey you know we're all a family we're going to be in this together forever and yeah i certainly want that warmth and that sense of long term for sure for sure for sure if you think about it though if we adjust our language just a little bit if we think of it more as a team I mean, sometimes players retire from a sports team. Sometimes there's a new recruit, you know, that, that comes from, you know, playing college sports to playing pro sports or something. Um, sometimes players get traded. Like, it's just a reality. If you're going to be an entrepreneur from time to time, you are going to have team members that move on. I think one of the best things that you can do is just to be proactive in both your performance reviews and any compensation reviews that you do to hear about their plans, to hear what they're up to. And ideally, ideally, you're not caught off guard. Um, more than once, I've had a quarterly review with a teammate. And I've just asked them about their goals and their plans. And it actually did spark them to say, you know what, Tim, honestly, I'm, I'm thinking about another opportunity. Um, and in it, one of a few things happened. Either A, it allowed me to prepare for their departure and for them to be a part of a really elegant departure. Um, or, or B, it got me like more runway time instead of getting the dreaded, Hey, can we talk message only to find out that they'd already been shopping for a job for, you know, three months. They've already interviewed, they've already lined something up and they're starting in two weeks from now. Oh, that's the worst, right? That's just absolutely the worst. So doing your best to be proactive here about your teammates goals can really, really go a long way and, and maybe help you catch something. So you're not caught off guard. So there you go. Um, that is, those are my thoughts on uh, when you're approached about a raise or you want to offer a raise. Um, if you have any other best practices, please do put them in the uh, comments below. I'd love to hear what your ideas are. Thank you so much. This is Tim Francis. If you found this helpful, please do subscribe.